Vietnam, a socialist republic nation of today, has emerged only since the second half of the 20th century after great hardship and much bloodshed. It all began in 1858 when the French troops landed in Vietnam to colonize the nation. Colonialism is a process of building and maintaining of colonies in one territory by the people from another territory and exploiting it economically. Their belief was that Vietnam was a backward country and it was the responsibility of the French to modernize it. China still had control over some parts of Vietnam from the dynastic era, but the French wanted maximum power. After the French Indochina War, the French gained control over the regions of Tonkin and Annam, which led to the formation of French Indochina in 1887. Indochina refers to the region in Southeast Asia. In fact, the modern day countries of Vietnam. Cambodia and Laos formed the Indochina. Trade had flourished in old Vietnam and it was linked with the maritime silk route which was favorable for the exchange of goods, people and ideas. Silk route refers to an interconnected network of trade routes that connects eastern, southern and Western Asia with the Mediterranean world including North Africa and Europe. The French had established economic and military dominance over Vietnam and exploited its natural resources such as the River Mekong of Vietnam to facilitate their trade and transportation. From a business perspective the French wanted to increase cultivation and movement of goods. Therefore, they built canals, earthworks and drained lands in the Mekong Delta using forced labor. The vast irrigation developed by the French was used to increase the rice production for the international market. By 1931, Vietnam became the third largest exporter of rice in the world. They also constructed a railway network to connect the northern and southern parts of Vietnam with China. Another railway network linked Vietnam with Siam or the present day Thailand. The concept of colonialism generated many debates and discussions amongst the intelligentsia. Writer and policymaker Paul Bernard believed that the prime motive behind acquiring colonies was to flourish business and make profits. Therefore, it was important for France to develop the economy of Vietnam in order to make their business profitable. He also suggested that industrialization would ensure sufficient employment. The Vietnamese economy was predominantly based on rice and rubber plantations owned by the French and elites in Vietnam. Indentured labor or labor based on contract was used in these plantations from the mid 19th century and the French did not want to industrialize the economy. The French did not adopt any measures as suggested by Paul Bernard and consequently Feudalism increased in rural Vietnam and standard of living decreased. The French colonization and their growing dominance in the country created tremendous unrest in Vietnam and resulted in nationalist resistance. This was the start of the nationalist movement in Indochina. Comb in the left hand, scissors in the right. Snip, snip, clip, clip. Watch out, be careful. Drop stupid practices. Dumb childish things 
Speak openly and frankly. Study Western customs. Seems like a harmless song, doesn't it? It is a hair-cutting chant, which ridiculed the Vietnamese tradition of keeping long hair. Such songs were used by the French schools to demean natives and popularize Western customs like short hair, Western clothing, and sports. The French colonists believed in carrying out a civilizing mission under the guise of modernizing the colony, and they used education as a tool to do so. This led to an erosion of cultural beliefs, religion, and tradition of Vietnam. The French citizens living in Vietnam, called colons, actually wanted an educated labor force, but they also feared that educated natives could oppose their domination and replace their jobs. Therefore, they designed the school curriculum very cleverly and opposed policies that granted full access of French education to the Vietnamese. The elite Vietnamese were very influenced by the Chinese culture. To counter this influence, the traditional education system of Vietnam was dismantled and a new French education system was introduced. There was a lot of debate over the language of instruction in schools. Some felt that French should be used as a medium of instruction in schools, while others suggested teaching Vietnamese in the lower classes and French in the higher classes. They also suggested awarding French citizenship to people who learned the French language and culture. The school textbooks glorified and justified the French colonial rule and portrayed the Vietnamese people as primitive and incapable of intellectual work. The Tonkin Free School, started in 1907, was to provide Western education and ideas. The domination of French culture faced opposition and resistance in Vietnam. As the number of Vietnamese teachers in lower classes increased, they began to question the textbooks. They modified the anti-Vietnamese text in the books and criticized it while teaching. In 1926, a major protest took place in the Saigon Native Girls School. Gradually, students came in conflict with the French as well as the elite. The protests against the French education were marked with nationalist feelings. By the 1920s, students formed various political parties, such as the Party of Young Anan, and published nationalist journals like the Ananese Student Opposing the French Domination. The plan of the French to strengthen their rule by controlling education had backfired. The Vietnamese intellectuals feared that their identity was under threat as their culture was being discounted and people were developing a master-slave mindset. In the wake of these thoughts, schools became a part of the nationalist struggle and supported the larger cause of independence. The same manner in which colonization of education backfired on the French, so did their measures on health and hygiene. The rat hunt and bubonic plague of 1903 was a clear indication of the failure in the French civilizing mission. It also presented a unique way for the Vietnamese to counter colonialism in day to day life. Bubonic plague is a contagious disease which often proves fatal and can cause an epidemic. This disease is transmitted by the bite of fleas from an infected person or a rodent, especially a rat. The French wanted to develop Vietnam as a modern state for their selfish gains 
and so modernizing Hanoi. One of the main cities of Vietnam came first on their agenda. They employed the latest architectural ideas and engineering skills to create the modern Hanoi. The French part of Hanoi was beautified with wide avenues and a well laid out sewer system. On the other hand, the native quarter was completely ignored as its development did not serve any purpose to the French. To make matters worse, garbage and sewage from the old city was directed into the river through sewers. So during heavy rainfall or floods, it clogged the streets of the natives. The sewers in the French part of the city provided perfect conditions for rats to breed in and also allowed easy movement throughout the city. Due to such unhygienic conditions, Hanoi became a favorable place for the outbreak of plague. The rats began to enter the luxurious houses of the French via sewage pipes. To combat the rat menace, a rat hunt was started in 1902. The French hired Vietnamese workers as rat catchers and paid them good bounty for each rat they caught. While catching rats in dirty sewers, the Vietnamese realized the concept of collective bargaining. They understood that they could manipulate the situation to their advantage and make a lot of money. To collect their reward from the French, the rat catcher had to show a clipped tail of the rat as proof that the rat had been killed. To maximize their gains, rat catchers began clipping the tails of the rats and releasing them so that the rat hunt could go on forever. On the other hand, some people began raising rats to earn money. As a result, the French had to abandon the bounty program. Meanwhile, the bubonic plague continued to affect Hanoi during 1903 and the subsequent years. The efforts to modernize Hanoi had backfired and the rat hunt marked the defeat of French colonizers and an utter failure of their civilizing mission. Here's a painting depicting the execution of Father Bori, a Catholic missionary in Vietnam. Let's understand the events that gave rise to such cruel acts. The French exercised colonialism not just politically, but socially and culturally as well. The culture of any country is influenced by the religion because religion shapes the basic values of people. Therefore, religion naturally became the next target of the French in Vietnam. Interestingly, while religion played an important role in strengthening colonial control, it also provided ways of resistance. Vietnam was a place for many religions such as Confucianism, Buddhism and local practices. The elite in Vietnam were educated in Chinese and Confucianism while the peasantry believed in a variety of syncretic traditions that combined Buddhism and local beliefs. Buddhism is the religion and philosophy founded by Siddhartha Gautama, commonly known as Buddha or the Awakened One. The French missionaries had introduced Christianity in Vietnam. They felt that the attitude of the Vietnamese to respect and worship the supernatural was backward, so it had to be rectified. As a result, 
Catholic missionaries successfully converted many people to Christianity, which led to serious objections from all quarters. The 18th century was marked by significant religious movements against the cultural attack of the French. One such movement was the Scholars' Revolt of 1868. This movement was spearheaded by the officials of the imperial court. They led a general uprising in Nugu'an and Hartian regions where over a thousand Catholics were killed. The Scholars' Revolt was crushed by the French, but it inspired many other patriots to revolt in the future. In Vietnam, many popular religions were spread by people who claimed to have had a vision of God. Some of these movements supported the French rule, while a few inspired rebellions against them. Hoa Hao was one such movement against the French, which started in 1939 and became a rage in the Mekong Delta. The man behind this movement was Hyun Pu So. The French tried to suppress the Hoa Hao movement by calling Hyun Pu So insane, and he was put in a mental asylum. To get rid of him, the French exiled him to Laos and sent many of his followers to concentration camps. Concentration camps refer to prisons where people were detained without due process of law. During the Second World War, the Nazis kept Jews in such camps. Overall, religious movements had a contradictory relationship with mainstream nationalism. While political parties sought their support, they were also uncomfortable with their rituals and activities. However, religious movements were certainly successful in provoking anti-imperialistic sentiments. Vietnamese nationalism was marked by the opposition of colonialism in all spheres of life. The Vietnamese also struggled with questions like what it meant to be modern and nationalist. They debated if it was essential to discard age-old traditions and social customs to become modern and also questioned whether the West was the perfect example of growth and civilization. While one group of intellectuals were in favor of strengthening Vietnamese traditions in order to resist Western domination, the other group felt that Vietnam could imbibe the best from the West even while opposing their domination. These contrasting views led to a lot of unending debates. By the end of the 19th century, Confucian nationalist Pan Boy Chao became a prominent figure in the anti-colonial resistance after he formed the Revolutionary Society Diu Tan Hoi in 1903. In 1905, Pan Boy Chao met the Chinese reformer Liang Qi Chao in Yokohama, who guided Chao in writing his influential book the history of the loss of Vietnam. The book deals with two interconnected themes of loss of sovereignty of Vietnam and the break of ties with China. There were nationalists who differed in opinion with Pan Boy Chao. Pan Chu Trinh was one such nationalist. He was unfriendly towards monarchy and was against the idea of resisting the French rule with the help of the court. In fact, he wanted to establish a democratic republic. Pan Chu Trinh did not want to reject Western civilization totally. He accepted 
the French revolutionary ideal of liberty, but accused the French for not abiding by the ideal. Early Vietnamese nationalists shared good relations with Japan and China. Both these countries provided models for change and served as refuge for the people absconding from the French. These countries also became the center for revolutionaries to build their network. During 1907 and 8, about 300 Vietnamese students visited Japan to get modern education. Many of them wanted arms and military help from Japan in order to overthrow the French in Vietnam and re-establish the deposed Nguyen dynasty. These students established a branch of the Restoration Society in Tokyo. However, after 1908, the Japanese ministry took a tough stand. It asked the revolutionaries, including Pan Boy Chow, to leave Japan and seek exile in China and Thailand. Apart from Japan, Vietnamese nationalists were also inspired by developments in China. In 1911, the Chinese monarchy was overthrown by a popular movement under Sun Yat-sen, and thereafter, a republic was set up. These developments encouraged Vietnamese students to organize an association for the restoration of Vietnam, which primarily aimed at realizing the objectives put forward by the revolutionaries. This was a dramatic turn in the independence movement of Vietnam. Now the objective of the revolutionaries was to establish a democratic republic in Vietnam and not a constitutional monarchy. Here's the man who introduced communism to Vietnamese politics and shaped the independence of Vietnam. Meet Ho Chi Minh, the founder of Vietnamese Communist Party. The name Ho Chi Minh means he who enlightens. He is credited for bringing together different nationalist groups in Vietnam in 1930. Communism is a political ideology that believes in the establishment of equal and classless society. Common ownership and control of means of production are important facets of a communist state. It was adopted in Vietnam as an anti-colonial solution. Let's quickly capture the situation in Vietnam during the 1930s. The Great Depression had led to a sharp fall in prices of main agricultural products such as rubber and rice. This resulted in the rise of debts, unemployment and rural uprisings in Vietnamese provinces of Nghệ An and Ha Tin. These provinces were very poor and prone to rebellions. Therefore, they were also known as electrical fuses of Vietnam. In 1940, Japan occupied Vietnam in order to make imperial gains in Southeast Asia. At this time, the League for the Independence of Vietnam, also known as the Viet Minh, fought with Japan and recaptured Hanoi in September 1945. Thereafter, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam was formed and Ho Chi Minh became its chairman.
the new Republic of Vietnam faced a lot of challenges after 1945. The French tried to gain control by using Bao Dai as the puppet king of Vietnam. General Henry Navarre, a supreme French commander, was confident of winning the battle and wanted to attack Viet Minh even in their remote bases. However, his plans failed miserably. After eight years of fighting, the Viet Minh defeated the French in Dien Bien Phu. This defeat thoroughly demoralized the French and crushed their hopes of retaining Vietnam. This battle convinced the Vietnamese of their ability to fight with imperialists through determination and strategic planning. After the French defeat, the peace negotiations took place in Geneva. In order to give solace to their bruised ego, the French persuaded the Vietnamese to accept the division of the country into two parts, North Vietnam and South Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh and the Communists took control of North Vietnam, while Bao Dai's regime was to look after South Vietnam. After the division, a series of events ensued that turned Vietnam into a battlefield for a long time. In South Vietnam, the Bao Dai regime was soon overthrown by a coup led by Ngo Dinh Diem, an authoritarian. The opposition got united as the National Liberation Front or NLF and resisted his dictatorial rule. NLF fought for the unification of the country with the help of the Ho Chi Minh government in North Vietnam. The rise of communism in Vietnam and the adjoining areas threatened the US. In order to intervene in the developing situation, the U.S. sent its troops to Vietnam. This was the beginning of the catastrophic U.S.-Vietnam War. Children running helplessly on the streets. During a sudden chemical bomb attack, some of them naked and shrieking for help. This heart-wrenching picture is one of the most devastating wars of the 20th century. The U.S.-Vietnam War. It was a long-drawn war with massive disasters on both sides. From 1965 to 1972, a staggering 34 million U.S. service personnel served in Vietnam. Despite its advanced technology and excellent medical facilities, the U.S. suffered huge losses in the war. They made brutal attacks on Vietnam using chemical weapons such as Agent Orange, Napalm, and Phosphorus Bombs. These weapons wiped out villages and raced down forests. Over 40% of Vietnam's farmland was affected by this poison and continues to affect people till today. Dixon an element of Agent Orange causes cancer, deformities, and brain damage in children even today. The U.S. decision to intervene in Vietnam was criticized vehemently. University graduates and the elite were waved off from compulsory military service, and the youth belonging to working class families were sent to war. Common masses began to question the government's decision to send young people to war. During this time, the U.S. media both supported and criticized the war. Propagandist films 
like Green Berets by John Wayne supported the war and inspired the youth to join it. While Francis Ford Coppola's movie Apocalypse Now criticized the war and explored the confusion that the war had caused in the U.S. The U.S. had completely underestimated the strength and determination of nationalist Vietnamese people. The Vietnamese fought for the independence and honor of their country against the technologically advanced U.S. They used their limited resources to gain maximum advantage over the U.S. The Ho Chi Minh Trail is a perfect example of Vietnamese enterprise. This trail was a massive network of footpaths and roads used to transport men and materials from North to South Vietnam. Support bases and hospitals were made along the trail. Supplies were transported by trucks, but mostly they were carried by porters, of whom 70 to 80 percent were women. The U.S. regularly bombed the trail to disrupt supplies. But the trail was managed efficiently and it was rebuilt quickly. With its determination and strategic planning, Vietnam bravely combated the U.S. attack and eventually got freedom in 1975. A rosy-cheeked woman, here I am, fighting side by side with you men. The prison is my school. The sword is my child. The gun is my husband. These lines aptly reflect the courage and determination of women who actively participated in the Vietnam War. Vietnamese women made significant contributions to nationalist causes since ancient times. Traditionally, women particularly from the lower classes, had enjoyed an equal status in Vietnam. However, they were not decision-makers and did not play any role in public life. With the growth of the nationalist movement, the idea of a new woman gained impetus. During this time, popular literature and thinkers celebrated the women who broke away from the traditional social mold. Writers and artists praised the rebel women from the past. In 1913, Pan Boy Chow wrote a play based on the lives of the Trung sisters who had fought heroically against the Chinese domination during 39 to 43 CE. Another celebrated woman from the past was Triu Ao from the 3rd century CE who organized a large army and opposed the Chinese rule. These heroic stories of rebel women were used by the nationalists to motivate common folk to fight for Vietnam. During the Vietnamese War, women were also represented as workers carrying a rifle in one hand and a hammer in the other. They were projected as selfless fighters working for the cause of a nation. Newspapers and magazines carried out many stories about the unmatched bravery of Vietnamese women. For example, Nguyen T. Jean, a woman soldier, was known to have shot down a jet with just 20 bullets. Women formed 70 to 80 percent of the total youth workers on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Approximately 1.5 million were a part of the regular army. They carried thousands of kilograms of cargo weapons and food and guarded 2,500 key points on the trail. They also built airstrips and neutralized numerous bombs. Many women actively participated in the resistance movement. They acted as nurses and helped in constructing underground rooms and tunnels. With the beginning of peace talks in 1970s, women came out of the role of warriors. They took up the role of New Age workers in agricultural cooperatives 
factories, and other production units. The Vietnam War got prolonged beyond the imagination of the U.S., and yet it was not able to crush the Vietnamese opposition. The war received a lot of criticism around the world and in the U.S., as numerous people had been killed on both sides. There were people who sympathized with Vietnam, writers such as Mary McCarthy and actor Jane Fonda visited Vietnam and brought the Vietnamese struggle to the notice of the international community. Noam Chomsky, an eminent American linguist, philosopher and political activist, called the Vietnam War the greatest threat to peace of national self-determination and to international cooperation. Such widespread criticism of the war and the U.S. government policies paved the way for negotiations. In July 1974, a peace settlement was signed in Paris. The North Liberation Front occupied the presidential palace in South Vietnam on the 13th of April, 1975, and Vietnam got unified.